Uh, welcome to our first set of lecture notes uh, from Chapter 5, Chapter 5 on the Calculation of Properties. In this set of notes, we'll very quickly discuss residual properties. Again, remember my assumption is, is that you've read the text chapter in detail, and so in these lecture notes, we'll only very briefly uh, discuss a few um, highlights of the chapter, and then we'll cover concepts in more detail as we work through our work to problems. The other thing I'd like to mention is that a main bulk of this chapter has to deal with property relations. And to be perfectly honest, Chapter 5 is one of my favorite in the entire text, uh, and I think one of the most important. However, that main first part on property relationships, I want you to read, but we're not, well, I'm sorry, but we're not going to solve any problems uh, related to property relationships. The reason being is this is covered in detail if you're a mechanical engineering student in your second semester course, and if you're a chemical engineering student in your second semester course. All right? And so we're not going to spend a great deal of time on it, or we're not going to spend time working through any actual problems. I want you to read through it, though, because in the flow of the text and the flow of the course, it makes a lot of sense, right? and hopefully helps to clarify where properties come from. Right? And the basic premise is, if I think about the Gibbs phase rule, if I have a single component, single phase system, I have two degrees of freedom. And so we keep emphasizing that means once I ha um, specify two intensive properties, all of my other properties are fixed. So when it comes to thermodynamic state functions, that already hints to the fact that all of our properties are related to each other. Okay? And so you know I have this quote here I like from Kendall that thermodynamics is nothing more than two laws and a little calculus. And so this idea, this concept of property relationships is, okay, all of our thermodynamic properties must be related to each other. Let's work out those relationships. In the concept of, you know, this course, you know, our CPB slash MME 314, Engineering Thermodynamics, what's important is, as we saw in the last two chapters, we're going to need to calculate changes in U and changes in S a lot, right? U and S being state functions. And so what we'll devise here, um, or what we'll devise in the chapter, is ways to calculate changes in U and changes of S using any two uh, intensive properties to pin down the state of our system. Most common being T and P, um, and that'll facilitate the ability to construct elementary paths to calculate changes in S and U and H uh, for a given uh, problem. Okay, but again, we won't discuss this in in Tremendous detail here because it's discussed in your second semester course. Okay, But I want you to read it. I want you to be aware of the idea and concept um, and have an idea of, of how these things work. Again, we're not going to work out any derivations. Um, we're not going to solve any problems involving property relationships. Uh, if you want to get some more material on that, I have tons of material posted from our second semester course that um, you're more than welcome to take a look at. Okay. All right, so what I first want to look at is, is okay, so this idea of property relationships, all of our thermodynamic properties are related to each other. We have this goal of trying to be able to calculate changes in U, changes in H, and changes in S. So for water, right, we have the steam tables in the back of the book. Water is so common, right, that, you know, properties have readily, readily been tabulated for water. But when it comes to all other fluids, right, it's impractical to tabulate, you know, all thermodynamic data for all fluids, right? And really how, you know, most people operate or you know, most problems or most softwares operate is by using an equation of state, right? And so we want to talk about residual properties next in that residual properties are going to give us that link of being able to analytically uh, calculate our thermodynamic properties armed with nothing more than an ideal gas heat capacity relationship, um, our ideal gas equation of state, and then also a cubic equation of state, or, you know, a more appropriate equation of state for your problem of interest. All right, so residual property is defined as nothing more than our actual property relative to that of an ideal gas. So residual property is actual relative to that of an ideal gas. Okay, so what I have here boxed in, the differential in a residual property is equal to the differential of my actual property relative to that of an ideal gas, or the differential of the difference. Okay. Now, if I want to calculate the change in a property and in going from initial state to some final state, right, I would integrate my differential from my initial to final state. 
So we get that the change in my residual property in going from some state 1 to some state 2 would be equal to the change in my actual property minus the change in my ideal gas property. Okay, so change in residual property is change in actual relative to change of an ideal gas. Okay, now we like residual properties for, for a couple of reasons, right? One is that this last term here, this ideal gas term, right, is something that we can readily calculate using ideal gas heat capacities and ideal gas equation of state, right? So we'll have simple analytic equations that we can use to calculate that term, okay? Um, and then in terms of my residual property, this we're going to we'll show momentarily, we'll be able to calculate directly from a cubic equation of state or any old equation of state that relates to the PVT behavior of a fluid. Okay. All right. So residual property, actual relative to an ideal gas. Ideal gas property, we can calculate readily using tabulated ideal gas heat capacity data uh, and ideal gas equation of state. So simple analytic equations. Residual property, we can calculate using an equation of state. Now, you know, we're going to get equations to calculate the residual property in this course using our cubic equations of state. So they're not, you know, simple analytic equations like the ideal gas equation of state, but they're equations that we can readily uh, perform numerical calculations on, right? So I'll give you MATLAB code to try and facilitate it because I don't want you spending hours of programming up cubic equation of state you know, in Excel or MATLAB, how to solve um, or compute residual enthalpy and entropy using cubic equations of state. I just want you to know how they work um, and have some experience using them. Okay, so we like residual properties so that I can calculate my actual as the sum of my ideal gas plus residual. Um, plus, right, in an ideal gas, we know that, you know, molecules don't interact and they don't take up space. So my residual properties can account for departures from this idealized state. So my residual term, I'll be able to attribute to the fact that molecules interact and those molecules take up space, right? So I can, you know, attribute those for this deviation or attribute the residual contribution as deviations from that idealized state. All right, so again, right, so far, right, we know that we have our ideal gas equation state. For an ideal gas, compressibility is 1, um, and Cp minus Cv is just equal to R. Okay, so we're going to skip the material on you know deriving property relations, um, but you know we could show that if I want to express the enthalpy of an ideal gas using in, uh, independent variables temperature and pressure, we get the following equation right dH is Cp dt plus this term in brackets. This first equation is true in general. So then for the case of an ideal gas, right, it's really this term in brackets we're able to evaluate using our ideal gas equation of state that PV equals RT. All right, so we can evaluate this derivative where P is being held constant, all right, and V ideal gas is just going to be equal to RT over P. Okay, and so if we plug in our cubic equation of state or our ideal gas equation of state, all right, we end up with the differential of the enthalpy of an ideal gas is just CP ideal gas dt. So the change in my ideal gas enthalpy would just be an integral from my initial to final temperature of this term. All right. So we could do a similar exercise for entropy. All right, so we could work on an expression for entropy with independent variables T and P. We can plug in our ideal gas equation of state to evaluate this derivative here. All right, so namely, this is a derivative at constant pressure, and we know V is equal to RT over P. Right, and in doing so, we get that the differential change in my entropy for an ideal gas is CP over T dt minus R over P dp. Right. And so key being, if I wanted to evaluate a change in my ideal gas entropy and going from some initial temperature to some final temperature, right, I can evaluate this. Right? Cp is only a function of t, and here I just have r over p. Right? So integral of that would just be negative r log p2 over p1. Okay. Um, you could use temperature uh, and volume. So here my molar volume as well, and you get the du is equal to cvdt. And we can get an equivalent expression for entropy um, using volume instead of pressure. Okay. But the key important part is that for an ideal gas, right, we can work out simple analytic equations to calculate changes in H, U, and S right, that I can readily evaluate. All I need right, is um, an expression for my ideal gas heat capacity. All right.
So now in terms of residual properties, so residual properties are going to be evaluated using an equation of state. In this course, right, we'll use our cubic equations of state. But in general, it's an equation of state. So if you were to look at details um, at steam tables when you use them, although I don't think our book gives a reference, typically they'll give you as a reference some um, you know, equation of state that they're using to evaluate all of their data. Okay, And so we're going to calculate residual properties using our equations of state. All right, so here's the general trick. So we can work out an expression for the differential of enthalpy with independent variables, temperature, and pressure that takes this form. And we know that for the case of an ideal gas, the term in brackets is zero. So we just get the differential of enthalpy is equal to CPDT. So how we're going to calculate um, my residual value is that I'm going to construct a path at constant temperature. Okay, so I'm going to assume I have a process at constant temperature. So if T is constant, so if I look up here, that means DT is zero. Okay, so temperature dependent term is so DT is zero, right? DT is zero. So the differential of my residual enthalpy is equal to the differential of my enthalpy minus the differential of enthalpy of my ideal gas, okay, where this is zero since DT is zero. And in my um, DH term, right, all I'm left with then is this term in brackets. All right, so the differential of my residual entropy or enthalpy is this term in brackets. And so what we're going to do next is we are going to integrate this from the limit that P equals 0 to P, my pressure of interest. All right, and the reason for this is remember that all uh, fluids approach ideal gas behavior in the limit that P goes to 0 or V goes to infinity at constant temperature. So if I'm holding temperature constant and at my lower limit P is equal to 0, well, that's just going to be equal to 0. Okay, And so if I integrate this from p equals 0 to p, what I'm left with then is just my residual enthalpy at t and p is equal to this term. Okay, So this gives us a way where if we have an expression, which will be our cubic equation of state, which can relate to PVT behavior of my fluid, I can work out an analytic equation for my residual enthalpy. Now again, easier said than done. Right? Our goal here is just to have some understanding or idea of, of where these equations come from. We could do a similar trick for entropy. Okay, So I have my expression for the differential of entropy in general. In our case for an ideal gas, we're going to construct a, a process at constant temperature. So that means dt is 0. This term gets killed. This term gets killed. So the differential of my residual entropy is this pressure-dependent term minus this pressure-dependent term. Okay, And so the key is I'm going to integrate from P equals 0 to P. Why? Because all fluids approach ideal gas behavior, then limit that P goes to 0 or V goes to infinity at constant T. Okay, so this term will be 0, right? Residuals actual relative to an ideal gas. Well, this is going to correspond to our ideal gas state. So we're left with just the residual entropy at T and P is equal to this. Okay, and so the main takeaway is that if I have an expression that relates to PVT, um, so if I have an expression that relates PVT um, for a given fluid, then I can, in theory, work out this integral. Okay, That's the main idea, right? So I could calculate my residual entropy and residual enthalpy as long as I have an equation relating the PVT behavior of my fluid. Okay, um, Now that's easier said than done, right? The challenge is if I just look at my Van der Waals equation of state in its natural form, it's explicit in P. Okay, and so, um, you know, that becomes problematic, right, when I'm trying to, so, you know, it's explicit in P, right, so it's not explicit in V, which is what I would need in terms of, you know, evaluating set expressions, okay, um, and so we won't do it, right, if you look at the book, um, they perform some ninja tricks or some mathematical manipulations, um, or, you know, equivalently, you could just, you know, change our thought process to integrating from, you know, limit of V goes to infinity uh, to your molar volume of interest. But all in all, all right, if you read through the book, right, acknowledge that they could perform some mathematical manipulations to work out analytic equations that you could use with our cubic equations of state. All right, so with our cubic equations of state, um, they're all tabulated in table 5.3 in the text. 
So we're not going to go through any derivations. I don't expect you to derive the working equations for a cubic equations of state. What I want is for you to have an idea of where they come from. Okay, Someone's already worked out all of the mathematics for us. They're already tabulated. Okay, So I want you to have some idea of where they are. Okay, And then I will give you MATLAB code where just like um, when we calculated molar volume with our cubic equations of state, so in goes TC, PC, omega, and temperature and pressure, out comes residual enthalpy and entropy. Okay, so I just want you to have an idea of, of where they come from. Okay, so um, so I always emphasize or I keep emphasizing cubic equations of state, but you could do the same thing with the truncated real equation as well. Any equation of state really that relates PVT phase behavior. Okay, last thing we'll mention is in terms of residual enthalpy and entropy. Okay, so you could use an equation of state, but there are also um, corresponding states theories out there. And so Lee and Kessler have tabulations that you could use to calculate uh, HR and SR. Uh, just note that typically they're tabulated in dimensionless form. And so this is HR divided by R times TC. Okay, but you could, there's Lee Kessler tables in which if you know your reduced temperature and pressure, you could look up H0 and H1. And then along with the centric factor, you could use that to estimate HR over RTC. Okay. And so these are just you know snapshots of the graphs for corresponding states theory um, from the text. Okay. But again, the main takeaway is that residual properties, well, so ideal gas properties, we have simple analytic equations. We can readily evaluate those. All you would need to know is an ideal gas heat capacity, and those are you know, tabulate in the back of our text, but in general are, are available to us. The residual term we calculate using an equation of state. In this course, all right, or in this chapter, we'll use cubic equations of state, but in general, you can use any equation of state. So the steam table data is actually generated from a very fancy equation of state for water. Okay, um, and so in general, you know, water tabulated data is available, but that's in general not the case. And so that's where we typically use um, equations of state. Okay, so I want you to just be aware of where all this stuff comes from, all right, and then get some practice of using a, a cubic equation of state to compute properties. Um, but again, we're not going to perform any derivations. Um, we're not going to derive any sort of property relationships. And, you know, I definitely wouldn't perform any of these derivations with a uh, cubic equation of state. Okay, property relationships will be reserved for your next semester course. Let me know if you have any questions.